Hi, this is Valerie Getch from Valerie's Photo Channel. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanted to quickly tell you about my free Color Illustrated Guide to Digital Photography Basics. It will help you improve your digital photography skills and understand how to use your camera's manual settings. You can get it for free at my website, valeriegetch.com forward slash digital hyphen photography hyphen basics. Hi, I'm Valerie Getch. If you watched my previous Lightroom tutorials, you should by now have a basic understanding of the library module. So let's move on to the develop module. I'm sure you've been anxious to get to the develop module because it's the fun, creative part of Lightroom and it's where you're going to spend most of your time. So let's get started. I'm starting here in the library module where I've selected the image that I want to work on in the develop module. So to get to develop, I can simply hit the D key, which by the way, you can do from any module in Lightroom, or you can hit develop on the menu up at the top. So you'll see that the develop module looks similar to the library. And you have your image in the center, of course. And over on the left, you see the familiar navigator, where if you click on the little magnifier, you can view your image full size to zero in on um, certain areas of your image. And below that, we have presets, which are actions that help you automate your adjustments and snapshots, which you should be familiar with if you watched my prior tutorial. Snapshots let you save a photo at certain points of time in its development, and you can go back to it at any time. And collections, you know, from my other tutorial on collections and smart collections. And history. History is very helpful because what's unique about Lightroom is that it records every single adjustment you've ever made since you imported the photo, and it's unlimited. So if you made a hundred or a thousand adjustments, they'll all be here. They're not uh, limited to just 20 like in other programs. And if you run your mouse over uh, the various points in history, and if you look at the navigator, you can see the subtle changes when you look at the different points of the history. So if I wanted to go back to sharpening and go back to this point, then of course it would undo all of the spot removal that I did sub subsequently. So I'm just going to collapse this panel by clicking the little arrow and that gives us some more workspace. Over on the right are the panels you'll use most. This is where all of the editing and adjustments occur. And this is where all the fun is as well. So if by chance any of these panels disappear on you, you can easily get them back just by using the right mouse. Click on your right mouse and just make sure that all of these are check marked. So to expand a panel, just click on the uh, little triangle. To close it again, just click on it again. When you have one of the panels open, you can also use the scroll bar to scroll down to another menu, or, or you can also scroll using uh, the wheel on your mouse. The other way to open your adjustment panels is to hit Control plus zero through nine. So when I hit Control zero, that opens the histogram at the top. And to close it again, I can just simply repeat the steps, control zero again. One thing that you might want to do to just make it a little tidier for you so that you don't have all of these panels open at once is to use solo mode. And so that auto collapses any panel that you have open as soon as you begin to interact with another panel. So you can see I have the basics open and then when I open tone curve, that closes the basics panel. So to do that, just right click in any area over on the right and check this mark here for solo mode. Now the center, of course, shows the image that you're working on. And if you right click your mouse, you'll get a menu that gives you a lot of different options from seeing your, um, going to the folder where you have your image or going to a collection, various sorting and organizing options and keywording, uh, metadata. This is where you could create a virtual copy of your image, etc. To preview your image before and after adjustments, you can hit the backslash key, and now you can see this is the image before, and then hit the backslash key again to get back to your after. And you can also use these icons here on the lower left 
The first one is loop view, which is what we're in now. And the second one is to view, you, you get four different options for viewing your before and after. The first is to view it um, left and right. So that left is your before, right is the after. And you can also view before and after with it split. So the left half of your image is before and the right part is after. As well as viewing your before and after top to bottom and before and after split. And right next to that, you have some options if you want to copy your before settings to after or copy your after settings to before. So these would just simply be reversed, in other words, and or swap your before and after settings. And you'll see the film strip at the bottom. You can use it to navigate to the next image in your development process, or you can use the right and left arrows on your keyboard to advance to the next image. And also, if you want to expand your viewing area, you can close the film strip by hitting the little triangle at the bottom, and that gives you a nice big work area. And to get it back, just hit the little triangle again. Just above the film strip is the filter bar. So over here on the right, you can filter the images that you see in the film strip by star ratings, uh, color labels, or flags. And also to the left, you'll see some information about your image, the folder it's in, as well as the file name. So that's a general overview of the develop module interface. You're probably wondering what all the adjustment panel tools do, and that's what I'll be covering in my next tutorial, so be sure to watch it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, I would love to hear from you, so feel free to leave one below, and I hope you'll also hit the like button. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you get all of my tutorials. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of them. I also want to give you a copy of my free guide to Digital Photography Basics to help you improve your photography skills and understand your how to use your camera's manual settings. You can get it for free at my website, www.valeriegetch.com forward slash digital hyphen photography hyphen basics. Now go out with your camera and have fun and I'll see you back here soon.